let's put this Panzer one I made in the last video into a vignette. I'm James and welcome back to LPJ Models. Let's start off with a few of the things I used to bring this vignette to life. Firstly, the base I used to start with was a Wilco 6x4 photo frame. It's enough room for the Panzer one to sit on without it being swamped. I also wanted to add a figure to this vignette. So after going through pages and pages of Germans pointing at things, I stumbled across this German guy with a gecko on his arm, which looks quite interesting. This is by a company called Panzer Art and the details are really nice. This appears to have been a digital sculpt, printed, cleaned up and then cast in resin. I also 3D printed this rock. This is a real 3D scan of a real rock that I found on Sketchfab and it does look pretty cool. I'll drop in a link to the file in the description. Just to give an idea of what the vignette's going to look like, I placed the main components on the frame just to get a feel of, of how it's going to be. This won't necessarily be the final layout, but it's given me an idea of where I want to go with this. And the main idea I have is that I want this Panzer one to be sat in a dried up riverbed or wadi with some rocks and scree around it. Anyway, let's get this photo frame disassembled and start working on the bulk of the base. Because stuff doesn't stick particularly well to glass, I made sure to remove this and leave it out. The rear base of the frame was also glued in place to make sure it stayed secure. I don't want the whole thing falling out like midway through the build. The first thing we're really going to use is some terracotta Daz clay. But to help this stick to the photo frame a bit better, I scored it with a scalpel and laid down some PVA glue. This will help the clay adhere to the base just that little bit better. With my stylish blue gloves, I broke off some of the Daz clay and stuck it down straight onto the photo frame. This was pressed and manipulated until it was roughly in the right shape. Water can help the process because it smooths out the clay. So usually, once I've finished laying down the clay, I just rub in some water to the top surface just to smooth and level it. I like Daz clay for the base layer because it dries rock hard, although it does take a little while to dry properly. Once the clay was laid down and smoothed, I trimmed the edges with a scalpel. Leaving those overhangs on there would just make the whole diorama look a bit awkward. I tidied up some of the edges with milliput because it's easier to sand. I then glued the 3D printed rock in place with some VMS 5K Flexi CA. At the moment it doesn't match up with the rest of the groundwork, but that will be fixed later on. Because I still wasn't happy with how smooth the edges of the diorama was, I cut some thin sheet styrene to shape and glued this in place once again with VMS super glue. Once this is dry, I'm going to blend the edges in so the edge between the diorama and the side of the base is seamless. I trimmed away all the excess very carefully with a sharp, fresh scalpel and then sanded the edge smooth, blending it in. For the first layer of the desert floor, I mixed up a concoction out of a few ingredients that I had, starting with two spoonfuls of brown pigment, a few spoonfuls of chinchilla dust. This is a fine sand that you can find in a pet shop and it's fairly cheap too. Then I added a few small spoons of Plaster of Paris. And one for luck. Maybe another. This was mixed to combine the ingredients before dropping in some water. Once I put in the water to my chocolate pudding, I mean earth mix, I gave it a thorough stir.
before smearing it all over the base of my diorama. To apply this I used a pallet knife because I have one to hand, but you can use a piece of cardboard if you need to. This was spread fairly smoothly over all of the clay areas of the diorama. I tried to be careful not to get any excess on the rocks. Although I did need to make sure this mix went all the way up to the rocks to make sure they blended into the base. Before this mixture had dried, I textured it and smoothed it further with an old paintbrush. There shouldn't be a lot of this visible underneath what's going on top, but it's best for it not to be completely smooth, just in case some does show through. Next up, I needed to make some small rocks. Now, I could have bought some, but I did have some of these old bricks to hand from my Minerva diorama. I literally just smashed these to tiny pieces with the back of a screwdriver. All I had to do was make sure that nothing left over still looked like a brick. This has also given me a really nice variation in size, which I can just sprinkle straight on the diorama. And don't worry, the square looking ones that you can see did either get removed or covered up. Once I was happy with the placement, I dropped on some sand and ballast freeze from VMS. You pretty much just drop this on and capillary action does the rest. And just to add some more texture, I sprinkled over some more chinchilla dust. For the cracked riverbed, I'm using AK Light and Dry Crackle Effects. This seemed like a fairly promising all-in-one solution. I poured on a good amount and spread it around with an old paintbrush and a palette knife. In the end, I didn't need to be this fussy when smoothing out the paint, because it does self-level really nicely. I then sprinkled over some more, well, brick dust, just to blend this in with the rest of the diorama. The crackle effect came out fairly nicely, so it was time to prime the base. The whole upper surface of the diorama was given a layer of Mr. Mahogany Surfacer. This was thinned at around 60% thinner, 40% paint, and sprayed at around 15 to 20 psi. When painting the edges of the diorama base in black, I started to notice a small problem. Some of those little flakes of mud were coming off, so they obviously hadn't bonded to the plaster layer in the diorama. This was a little bit frustrating. So I had to come up with a solution to get this to stick properly. I re-poured the cracking effect paint over the dry riverbed again. I was really happy with how the first pour looked, and it took three or four redos to finally get a result that I was happy with. To fix the crackly mud in place, I had to think a little bit outside the box. After trying several things, I ended up using some Mr. Mark Setter Neo, which is a decal setting solution with a strong adhesive element. And so far, it's worked okay, so fingers crossed that it lasts. With the base reprimed, it was time to start on with the painting. For this, I used several colours. MRP Pale Wood, MRP Olive Grey, my own Dunkle Gelb mix, and Tamiya Deck Tan LP16. I started with the Tamiya Deck Tan, and this was mottled over the whole riverbed area of the diorama. For the riverbed, I used a combination of the LP16 and my Dunkle Gelb mix. This kind of matched the pictures of a wadi that I'd seen online. For the rock and stony areas, I leaned into a more pinky colour with the MRP Pale Wood. This is almost like a flesh colour, so in my opinion it was a good base for sandstone. 
The colours on the rocky areas are definitely not final because I will be brush painting over them. But I can't decide whether I want to go slightly more ready in tone with the sandstone. I'll decide shortly. The mix of the LP16 deck tan and the MRP Dunkel Gold mix was looking a bit too dark on the riverbed, so I decided to lighten it further with some more deck tan. And as a bonus, only one of the mud flakes pinged away. This was just recovered and glued in place. I did decide to make my sandstone a more ready colour. I mixed in some Japanese propeller brown with my Dunkel Gelb mix. And this was sprayed over the main rock and the scree areas. To tie all of the elements of the base together, I used some VMS sand pigment. And to make application easier, I mixed it up into an airbrush ready consistency, using Alkyd binders for strength and Universal Weathering Carrier just to thin it down. This was sprayed mainly over the pinky areas, but I did drag some of this sand colour into the riverbed just to blend it together. I think this light orange sand tone over the pink colour really adds a lot of depth to this diorama base. It was then time to paint some of those rocks, and I used just a few Vallejo colours to achieve this. Cold white, German sea black brown, hull red, dark vermilion, bright orange, brown sand, cavalry brown, sand yellow, flat flesh, old wood, and German camouflage beige. It would be mad to go through all the colour mixes I did, so I'm just giving you an outline of the colours I used. For the shadowy areas on the main rock, I mixed up some hull red with some orangey tones and painted this over all of the under surfaces. The angle here is a bit weird, but it looked okay in the end. To add some more depth to that 3D printed rock, I used some German Sea Black Brown as a shadow colour. Well, a shadow colour that was darker than the last one. The rock was painted similar to a way I'd paint a figure. You know, with several thin glazes to build up the colour to opacity. But I felt this gave me a lot more control when it came to painting the details. For the highlights on the main rock, I lent into some more flesh colours. I used some of the light sands and tans and flesh colours and mixed in some orange just to bring out the highlights. And I think in the end, even though the painting was fairly simple, the results were really good. Next up, I used pretty much every single one of those Vallejo colours, mixed together in varying forms and painted all the rocks. I tried to keep the base hue, the reference hue, as a kind of orangey colour, just to match the tone of that OG 3D printed rock we've just painted. Allowing for some slight variations for more visual interest of course. And once that was done, it was time to add a few of the small details to the base including this 3D printed aloe vera plant, which is pretty niche. This was taken from a scan of a real aloe vera plant and I just scaled it down to fit the size. This was sprayed green and given some red tips, similar to one I've seen online. I also 3D printed a ram skull. The original file was really large, so once again this was scaled down to fit the diorama. I'll post the links to all the files used in the description. There was also this really cool clay carafe. This was taken from a scan in an African museum of an original item, which was then scaled down to 135. Now it's time to paint up the figure. I won't go into the full details of this because it's very similar to my DAC figure painting guide. Once again, you'll find a link to that in the description. The only main deviation I made was to do the flesh with MRP Pale Wood. After experimenting with it, I find it's a really great colour to base paint the flesh on your figures. So if you ever notice my figures and say, well they look a bit wooden, there is some truth to that. The rest of the details on the figure were blocked in with a paintbrush, including the shorts on this gravity defying guy. The main colour for the shorts was mixed from Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II and Golden Olive. 
while the base tone for the top was brown sand and sand yellow. These were then lightened and darkened with sequential shading. The various details on the figure were again picked out with various Vallejo colours. And for some reason I used blue for the epaulettes. So it turns out this guy is in the medical corps. But I'm sure some medical corps personnel would have been near a tank during the war. I've also realised the macro tubes for my camera really don't show my figure painting in the best light. Up close the paintwork looks really rough, but at regular viewing distances it looks really good. Or am I just making excuses? Being in the desert I wanted to give this guy a little bit of sunburn, so I mixed up a glaze of orange and red Vallejo colours and just painted this all over the flesh. Just thinned with water. The gecko was painted with a selection of greens. I did try to find some reference pictures for a gecko that looked similar to this, but couldn't find much. So I just went with a fantasy scheme. After he was painted in green and shaded a bit, I gave him some red stripes. Gecko and figure painted, it was time to mount these elements to the base. Usually I just put the tank in place, but this time I wanted to make it more secure. So I drilled a hole in both the tank and the base and threaded some brass wire through the two. That was a mouthful. Now I wouldn't usually do this, but there have been several reports of some dingus picking up a diorama at a show and having the parts fall off. So I kind of wanted to avoid that. Once the tank and wire were threaded, I pulled it nice and tight, and off camera I taped it down and superglued it to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. And lastly, I sat the guy in a jerry can. I wanted it to look like he was going somewhere to collect some water with a jerry can he took off the back of the tank. And then he spotted a gecko, and the rest is history. And with that, the build was complete. I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. You guys are the best. And thank you for your continued support and encouragement. I'd also like to thank you for taking the time to watch another one of my videos. And if this is your first LPJ Models video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then you won't miss out on any new video releases. Let me know what you think of this build in the comments. It's not very often I do a vignette, but I felt with the tank I really needed to do something to pull it together and show it off. And I think I've done just that. I'm really pleased with how this came out. It's nice and small with a tight focus on the vehicle and the figure, but I'm also really pleased with how the groundwork came out. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'll leave you with the gallery images. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thank you for watching.